In 1997, I was pastoring as part of a denominational um, church and actually had pretty good ministry. I was a youth pastor and then pastoring. We were seeing some success within our denomination, but then I experienced revival. I shared some of that story this weekend. I won't share the story, but in that experience of revival, it was a prophetic promise over my life. I'm going to use you. I'm going to give, make you a voice for me. I'm going to send you around the world. I'm going to do great things with you. How many know when God gives you a promise, you're just ready to go? Here am I, Lord, send me. Come on, God, send me. And I remember after having that promise, I took a, a, a short vacation up to my in-laws, my wife's parents' house. They lived in the mountains of Pennsylvania. One morning I woke up early and I walked to the top of this hill. And I was standing there, we we're far from any seemingly civilization. I think the nearest gas station was 10 miles away. It was all hills and mountains and green grass. And I'm just having an awesome time with the Lord. I watched the sun come up, I'm worshiping God. And, and I prayed this prayer. And as soon as I said this prayer, it was one of those emotional prayers in the presence of God. You get in the presence of God and things come to your mind that didn't, they weren't on your mind before. And I was pastoring at the time in a very urban area a lot of asphalt, concrete, and I'm standing here in this grass where possibly very few people have walked before. And I'm standing here realizing that where I've been walked in my last season, so many people have walked. And where I'm standing right here in my transition, not very many people have been before. And I prayed this prayer be between me and God. I said, God, I'm so thankful for the past season, but in the past season, I've walked where everybody's been walking. Thousands of people have walked the sidewalks where I pastor. Thousands of people have walked the, the streets where I pastor. There's very little grass. There's very little place you could go where thousands of people hadn't been before. And this place where I'm standing, I don't know, maybe I'm the first person on earth to stand in these very footprints right here. I, that's what I want to do in my life, God. I want to walk with you where very few people have walked. I want to stand with you where very few people have stood. I want to know you where very few people have known you. God, show me your glory. Be careful what you pray. God's listening. What does it mean? It means that in order to teach you to hear his voice, everything else has to be silent. Because there is nothing like your love. And there is nothing like your love. You know, I had a great prophetic promise over my life. That promise came two more times. Three exact same prophetic words within three months. I've never had a prophetic word over my life. Three exact same prophetic words within three months. Three different states, three different ministers, three different locations. I was like so excited. I was so jacked. God's going to send me to the nations. I'm going to go to the nations with the word of the Lord. You know, within three months of those prophetic words, God started to move in my church, and so the devil started to move, and, I, and it was all part of the, the plan in my life, but I was, I was out of the ministry, I was homeless, and I was unemployed within three months. What happened? God gave me a promise. He was taking me to my promise. I said, show me your glory. God, I want to know you where very few people have known you. I want to see you where very few people have seen you. I want to hear you where very few people have heard you. And you know where I ended up? <laughs> I ended up back where I said to my wife when we got married we were in Bible school I said honey if we get married I'll make you one promise you'll never have to live with your parents be careful what you promise God's listening so for nine months we lived with my in-laws and I now believe in purgatory <laughs> it's not hell but it's almost <laughs> And so I remember, I remember having a conversation. I took a walk with the Lord one day again, 
I, I drove my car. I was trying to get gas. We were so far from a gas station. I mean, literally, I had a great promise over my life. But I don't have a job. I don't have a place to live. Nobody knows I'm out there. I'm in the wilderness. You know, the wilderness is a place where God wants to meet you. The wilderness is a place where God wants to breathe in your promises. And so I, I'm driving to the gas station. I have very little money to get gas. I run out of gas on the way to the gas station. I get out of my car. I start walking through this field because I'm going to have it out with God, okay? I'm having a Bruce Almighty moment. I'm just like ready to have it out with God. And I walk about a mile into this field. And I'm like, God, I don't understand. I said I wanted to walk with you where very few people have walked. I want to stand where very few people stood. I obeyed you. You promised me this. God, why are you doing this to me? You took away my house. You took away my ministry. You took away my money. God. And as soon as I st said that, I looked down and I was standing, honest, true story, in a very large pile of some kind of demon demonic creature that had visited that field. I was standing in a big pile of animal droppings. And my white sneakers, which were white just before that, were now brown. And I looked down. And I'm, as my sneakers, I just, it was a moment I'm not proud of, but it's true. True story. I took my sneakers off. I picked them up. I said, you took away my house. You took away my ministry. You took away my stuff. Just take my stupid sneakers. And I threw them at God. And then I waited for the lightning bolt. Thank God it didn't happen. I walked back to my car. It seemed like heaven was silent. It seemed like it was dark. What was God doing? He was trying to teach me where I should have my trust and my hope. It wasn't in me. It wasn't in my success. It wasn't even in my promise. He wasn't trying to give me a promise. He was trying to give me a house, an abode, a place of rest. He wasn't trying to tell me, I'll send you to the nations. He was trying to tell me, I'll go with you if you stay with me. I want a place where you can be with me. And I'm walking back to the, to the car. And I'm saying, Lord, I just don't understand it. I would never do this to my son. And he said, Bob, my only son gave up heaven for you. My only son went to the cross for you. My only son made himself of no reputation for you. My only son died for you. And that's all I want from you. I just want you to die so I can live in you. You know, I had to die to my ambitions. I had to die to my ministry. I had to die so I could look like him. Can I tell you something? It doesn't feel good to be in the cave, but God said, Moses, just for a while, just for a while, because in the silence, you're going to learn to hear my voice better. In the darkness, you're going to learn to see better. And when I removed my hand, he said, you're not going to see my face because you see my face, you're already dead. No man can live. See, God is trying to let us know we've been crucified with Christ therefore we no longer live but Christ lives in me so you know what I still have vision but I have less human ambition I still have drive and energy but I don't have the same kind of need to achieve to please God because I know he's pleased with me and so now I can go but he's with me I can take this habitation because he said Moses when I remove my hand you're going to see my back, my hind parts. It's literally the word afterward. It's the afterward. What happened when Moses was in the darkness? God's glory was passing by. What happened when Moses was in the cave? God's glory was passing by. What happened when Moses was in the silence? God's glory was passing by. And he said, Moses, when I remove my hand, you will see my afterward. You know what that means? Is that the reason that you go through a cave is so that you can experience the afterword of his glory you can see what happens when the when the glory passes by what does it look like afterward when it looks like what you built is destroyed what does it look like afterward when it looks like you do everything to do right and then your family is hurt and destroyed or whatever you're living with your in-laws what does it look like afterward I'm telling you, some of you are in the darkness, but you need to, see, need to see the afterword. Some of you are in the silence, but you need to hear the afterword. Some of you feel like God's not there, but you got to see the afterword. Because I want to tell you, when Moses came out, guess what he came out with? 
His face shined like the sun. He walked down that mountain. And look, they couldn't even look at him. They had to put a veil over his face because he had the afterword of God's presence. He had the afterword of God's glory. He had the residue of God's glory. And that sounds like an awesome story. But guess what? You don't get the afterword. You get the forward. You you don't get the diminishing glory. You get the increasing glory. You don't get the fading glory. You get the uber glory. And it grows from glory to glory to glory to glory. Which means the more you walk in the afterword of what God's done in your life, the more you embrace what God has said, even though it looks like it's not happening, you start to look like Him. You start to act like Him. You start to smell like Him. There's not just a residue, but there's a residence of God's presence. And I really believe that some of you have gone through some things that looked like you had to walk through some stuff. But can I tell you something? If you're willing to walk through some stuff, you're going to get to stand in His presence. If you're willing to walk through some stuff, you're going to get to walk where very few people have walked before. If you're willing to, by mistake, whoops, I stepped in some stuff. Can I tell you something? I'd rather get rid of the old stinky shoes than stand in the stuff. I'd rather walk into His glory barefoot. I'd rather walk into His glory with nothing. I'd rather go and say, God, take it all because you're all that I need. If your presence doesn't go with me, don't send me from this place. If your presence doesn't go with me, I don't want to build a house. If your presence doesn't go with me, I don't want to go to the nations. If your presence doesn't go with me, God, I don't want to to stand on stages. I want your presence, God. And I want to tell you something. The next season that you're going into, I heard the word transition. Can I tell you something? It's a greater glory than you've ever experienced. It's the scent of heaven. It's the sight of heaven. It's the atmosphere of heaven like never before. And I believe some of you are still in that cave saying, let me out, God, let me out, let me out. And God's saying, hold on just a little longer because you're going to see my afterward. None other has ever